participant. Uh, I will be talk in Bahasa, in, in two Bahasa, uh, two language. One is Bahasa and one is in, in English. Okay. So, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat siang. Salam sejahtera untuk kita semua yang saya hormati Bapak WR4 ITS, Bapak Dr. Bambang Pramujati. Terima kasih rawuhnya Pak Bambang. And then good afternoon for all of the keynote speaker from Kaohsiung, Taiwan. Dr. Kuo, Dr. Ko and Dr. Lin. Thank you very much for attending this uh, webinar. And also we have Ibu Dr. Sri Fatmawati as a member of Task Force for COVID-19 in ITS, and also all of the participants. Thank you very much for attending this uh, webinar. Bapak dan Ibu yang kami hormati, terima kasih sekali atas kehadirannya. Uh, as I mentioned previously, seperti yang saya sampaikan sebelumnya, saya akan menggunakan bahasa Indonesia dan juga bahasa Inggris. I'm sorry, I will be used uh, both of language, bahasa and also English. Because in Mandarin, I just can say Xiao Wu Hao. Oh, it's what a Chong Wan Put I Hao. Just only remember like that one. Because I stay in Taipei for a three and a half, but still my Mandarin language is not very good. Okay. So we will start our seminar. We are from ITS, Institute Technology, 10 November. We held this webinar in this day because this is also our National Laser Guild Day. In Bahasa is Hari Kebangkitan Nasional, and we really hope that this uh, pandemic will be go uh, far, far away very soon. Okay, and we also know from many of news, social media that mention Taiwan is really successful in manage of this pandemic. We really want to learn how Taiwan can manage this issue and we contact the Taipei Economic and Trade Office in Surabaya, Teto. And thank you very much for the Director General of Teto Surabaya, Mr. Benson Lin, because he respond everything very quickly, just less than three days, then we can hold this webinar. And uh, however, today, the Director General of Teto Surabaya, Mr. Benson Lin, could not attend this event because some activity in Teto. But we have also several participants from Teto that might be also attended this uh, webinar. Ibu Echi and others friends from Teto, thank you very much. And I would like to mention the schedule for our seminar today. First is opening remarks by Vice Rector of Research, Innovation, and Collaboration, also Alumni Affairs, Bapak Dr. Bambang Pramujati from ITS. Then continue by also opening remarks from the side of Kaohsiung, especially from uh, Dr. Ko and any other uh, representative from uh, Kaohsiung that maybe can also mentions about the participant from that side. And also then we will continue with the webinar talk. The first talk is from Ibu Dr. Sri Fatmawati. Ibu Dr. Sri Fatmawati is the head of the task force for COVID-19 of ITS. Thank you, Ibu Fatma. And also after that is talk from uh, Dr. Kuo, Professor Dr. Kuo, and also uh, Professor Dr. Ko, they are from Municipal Xiaokang Hospital that will be talk about the COVID-19, the challenge and the response in Taiwan and also in Xiaokang Hospital. And then continue by Dr. Lin Chun Yu that will talk about how important the IT system in uh, this uh, pandemic condition, especially for the hospital then continue by question and answer. Okay, and without further ado, for the first agenda, we would like to invite our Vice Rector of Research, Innovation, Collaboration, and Alumni Affairs, Bapak Dr. Pram Bambang Pramujati, to deliver opening remarks. So, Pak Bambang, the time is yours. 
Oke, okay, thank you Bu Arma. Terima kasih sekali. Selamat siang. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat siang. Salam sejahtera buat semua. Suara saya bisa didengar, Ibu. Can you hear my voice? Bu Arma bisa ya? Eh, bisa, Pak. Iya, iya. Baik. Saya ucapkan terima kasih. Sekali lagi, uh, selamat siang. Salam sejahtera buat semuanya. Good afternoon, and gentlemen. Uh, Nihao, that's the only word I, I can speak in Chinese. Nihao. Uh, first of all, we shall thanks to God Almighty that we are still given the opportunity, we are still given health and time in this difficult time, such that we are all able to participate in this event, a webinar on how to manage COVID-19 uh, pandemic. I would like for sure to thank to our distinguished guest speaker, uh, doctors from Taiwan who have been directly involved and have been in the front line of controlling COVID-19 in Taiwan, which reportedly no more new cases are happening. Welcome Dr. Ko Cheng, Chief of Infection Control Department, as well as the Deputy Chief of Epidemic Prevention Team in Kaohsiung Municipal Xiao Kang Hospital. And then Dr. Ko, Superintendent Kaohsiung Municipal Xiao Kang Hospital, also served as the commander of the Epidemic Command Center in Kaohsiung Municipal Hospital. And last one, Dr. Lin, Director of Infection Center, Control Center, Kaohsiung Medical University Hospital, and also the Director of the Infection Control Center, uh, KMU. And for sure, we are, all, we, we are all going to learn a lot, uh, many valuable lessons from our fellow researcher and doctor from Taiwan. Uh, we are all aware that currently there is no country in this world that can escape uh, this pandemic. Every country has its own challenges and strategies on how to deal and handle this virus wave. We also know that several has been declared as countries that successfully manage and find solutions to this. And for sure, Taiwan is one of, uh, Taiwan is one of them. So the Taiwan stories in, in this matter would be uh, one that we must listen to and considering how successful Taiwan is compared to other countries. Uh, the reason could be many things. Maybe it's their government policy, it may be it's their technology, high technology that has been implemented to respond to this uh, pandemic, or probably that's advanced technology or advanced bullet, or maybe their social economic condition, or many other uh, factors that may play important role in this uh, fighting the uh, pandemic. ITS or Institute Technology School of November, our institute is one of the leading university in technology uh, already promotes so many equipment and knowledge on how to manage this pandemic. We have uh, many innovation that has been introduced and used by the community such as robot uh, that serve as a nurse. We call the robot as a RISA. It used to help nurses and medical doctors to take care of the patient. We also have also robot that help to uh, sterilize the a room or the operating operating room. We also has many uh, other innovation product, such as facial sanitizer to contribute to community, hospital, and others. However, we realize that our country is still struggling in coping with this uh, pandemic. And for your information, we have long collaboration with Taiwan. Uh, I think since 2003 up to now, we collaboration with many universities in Taiwan, with the government of Taiwan. And hopefully uh, in this event, we can learn a lot and get some information from uh, our fellows from Taiwan about how to manage this uh, pandemic. I really appreciate your time in your, for sure your busy time to share with us your valuable information that for sure we could learn uh, from you all. And lastly, uh, I hope that all the participants in this webinar could have a fruitful discussion and also gain a lot of information or knowledge from this event. And hopefully uh, we can get through this pandemic as soon as possible. Uh, have a successful, successful webinar. Enjoy the discussion. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pak Bambang, and our vice director.
And we hope this webinar can give us a view about how to deal with this pandemic. And for the second opening remark, we would like to invite from Kaohsiung. Mr. Hasesu, can you, Ms. Hasesu, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear and, you. Okay, from Kaohsiung to uh, deliver opening remarks and also introduce the participant from your side. So time is yours. Okay. So first of all, thank you for inviting us to join this webinar. And let's invite our participants from our end. First is Dr. Po from Shogun Hospital. Second is Dr. Tsai from Datong Hospital. And now is Vice Director Yang from Zhonghe Hospital. Vice Director Director Huang from Zhonghe Hospital. Yeah. Dr. Fu Huang from Zhonghe Hospital. Dr. Lin from Zhonghe Hospital. <laughs> yes. And Dr. Zhang from Shaogang Hospital. And Dr. Yang from Datong Hospital. Yeah, so let's welcome our first speaker, first speaker, Director Ko. Okay, uh, uh, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, every, every time in the worldwide uh, during the webinar, uh, I will make a, a show introduction about our KMU system. So uh, would you play a uh, slide? Okay, Dr. Ko. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Dr. Ko, maybe yeah. for the uh, first uh, season, uh, first uh, session, we would like to uh, Ibu Sri Fatmawati to mention a little bit uh, about uh, what ITS already have done previously. And yeah. after that, we'll be continued by you, by the Professor Ko. Can we uh, uh, start with the first session? Okay. Okay, so. Uh, okay. So, okay. So, um, so uh, this is uh, um, uh, Kaohsiung, Taiwan. So it's uh, our pleasure to join this uh, seminar. So we will share uh, our experience about the uh, quarantine in the government and the uh, community and the uh, hospital uh, in Taiwan. So uh, uh, we will uh, let Professor Zhang uh, to introduce the policy of our government and uh, uh, airport quarantine. And uh, Professor Lin uh, will, will introduce uh, about uh, ITS uh, the, uh, application in uh, the prevention of infection or COVID-19. Okay. Yeah. Okay, doctor. Thank you very much, Dr. Kuo. So we will start our first session, okay? We will uh, give the talk to Ibu Sri Fatmawati. Ibu Sri, are you already ready there? Yeah, yeah, Bu. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so maybe we can share the slide yeah, from yeah. Will, Ibu Sri. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you for inviting me uh, for this seminar. Actually, I'm not the head of task force for COVID-19 for ITS, but uh, I'm part of the task force, uh, especially for the education. So uh, during this seminar, I would like to share with you uh, what uh, ITS responses to COVID-19. Uh, regarding this uh, pandemic. So, um, first, uh, in inauguration 14 March, uh, we have the graduation. And since in the beginning, before national pandemic disaster declaration, so we have a graduation. So we have uh, uh, no, shen, no shake hand policy on our inauguration. Uh, to anticipate uh, the coronavirus. And then the, the second one 
is uh, we also have uh, done some uh, policy about the academic activities related with the uh, this pandemic. The all academic activities was shut down since Monday uh, in 16 March for a week, and afterward we active uh, using online system. Uh, well, actually we have uh, we have uh, task force for the for the online system or online uh, lecture um, and we have uh, continue with the uh, task force and in this task force uh, a task force for COVID-19 in ITS is established at March 19 so we provide hotline numbers and also we have uh, uh, one section uh, special for the COVID and we also support the ITS Medical Center as part of the team. We equip all of the, uh, the, the staff with the very good, uh, 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 very good equipment. And we focus on the, how we protect ITS community from COVID-19 and con contribute ITS innovation for the nation. And in the later situations, COVID-19 is not only medical crisis, but also economic crisis. So we, we try to make a charity program to surrounding communities, not only for the, uh, not only for the people around us, but also for, the, for our students and also all of the staff. Okay. And here are some key responses to protect ITS. So um, we task force provide the COVID protocol for anyone who still had activities in campus and protocol to going back down to hometown. And we do many campaign program on COVID-19 to students, staff and lecture. So we try to communicate and we try to educate uh, our students, our uh, uh, academic uh, staff and also our uh, staff, technical staff. Uh, because you know that this one is a new pandemic uh, and we actually we don't know how how to how to prevent the the virus and we try to uh, communicate we try to educate them and we also not only uh, by using the uh, what is it the, the circular uh, announcement but also uh, from the uh, from the task force we make uh, infographics so it uh, will help our student and uh, to understand uh, easily. So I continue to the next slide. So this is also some key responses to, to protect ITS. Uh, one of the key uh, uh, protection is uh, we sterilize the campus or the hall and then shut down with the work from home policy. Some areas in the campus are still active, only for activities that related to COVID-19 and limited active, uh, administrative, uh, administrative work. So for this active room, the sterilization is regularly applied, especially for the uh, people who are still working for, uh, uh, for the prevention of the uh, uh, virus spreading. So the next one. Uh, we also establish a web-based system to support, uh, support uh, work from home and school from home by providing free credits for low economic uh, students uh, because we know that uh, usually we have the, well, in class uh, uh, lecture, but then we, uh, the, the student, because uh, not all of the students have the, you know, the uh, very good economic, uh, and we also uh, try to support uh, the the quota uh, of the student, the internet of the student. And uh, other things that we have done is to uh, uh, make a uh, GIS database for students who are living in around the campus, probe their condition by telephone, refer to medical center for suspect and supervise medical recommendation by phone. So uh, for, this, uh, for, this, the, for this response, we uh, collaborate with the, with the ITS Medical Center. So we try to help the students not only uh, 
not only by using uh, uh, by using telephone, but also we try to uh, full support, fully support uh, with the uh, the food and also the supplement to provide them and to prevent them from the coronavirus uh, if they have a symptom. So uh, because you know uh, during that time, uh, Surabaya itself is uh, uh, is not. Uh, it's not uh, was not provide the the very good testing. I mean, uh, 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 provide all of the testing for the for the uh, symptoms. And another thing is we try to protect a student dormitory with the COVID protocol and equip them with certain COVID uh, related tools such as hand sanitizer and room sterilization. I will, I will show you what is the innovation that we have done for this COVID, for this COVID. and also they have to fill from, uh, for the student living of the dormitory. And uh, this one is, I uh, heard mentions before, that we provide uh, nutritious food and vitamin for free to ensure the immunity of the student around the campus because they cannot go back to their hometown. And, uh, you know, during this COVID, all of the uh, the shop is uh, and restaurant is uh, uh, also shut down. And the student directorate has collaborated with certified food stall around the campus. So we also support their economic conditions uh, and and we try to provide all of the nutritious food and vitamins for the student. And this program is still running up now. So. Other things is uh, uh, we assess a student who are going back to the hometown with special car, uh, car uh, transportation model. So giving a knowledge on how to, uh, pro, uh, how to prevent COVID-19 and providing medical checkup before departure. So we collaborate uh, with the ITS Medical Center for this. And uh, here we are, the ITS innovation. Actually, this one is, should be well, I think uh, it's suitable for uh, Dr. Pramu, a uh, vice rector, uh, to uh, present about this. Um, so, but uh, okay, I will, I will, I will show you uh, uh, this one. The innovation. Uh, first thing is uh, we have donations, and we try to give the information for the, uh, the community. And uh, we try to uh, uh, give more contribution to the nations by using our uh, invention. So first is we produce hand, our hand sanitizer and disinfector, uh, so disinfector, uh, disinfectant for hospital and community health centers. So uh, right now we produce more than five thousand liters for hand sanitizers and uh, it's about the more than 1,000 liters uh, disinfector. And other things, this one is, you know, uh, we are very proud as uh, one of the contributor or one of the uh, innovator for the facial at that time. Uh, in, the, uh, in the beginning, uh, it's very uh, difficult for the, uh, nurse to get the facial and uh, right now we already produce more than 120,000 facials and we con uh, we distribute uh, this facial to 24 province in Indonesia this one the facial is simple product but indeed meaningful uh, meaningful and because uh, there is no stock in the in in the society and we transform in the laboratory into factory and thank you very much for uh joko Krewol for this innovation and uh the other things is ice chamber this one is a sterilized room with three methods we provide three methods we uh, by using liquid spray and evaporated liquid and gasification uh, we use ozone and then um, we try to fumigate the, the disinfectant. Uh, this to provide, uh, this invention is to provide the, uh, the people who want to enter the building uh, for, uh, prevent from the coronavirus. The other things, and 
this one is uh, quite uh, needed for the hospital. It's simple and low cost ventilator to help acute patients. And the vice governor, uh, Pak Emil Dardak uh, of East Java province presented in ITS launching and even they, 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 they uh, support us. Thank you very much for this. And okay, this one. This one is a very, uh, this, uh, this one is highlight uh, for the nation and we are proud uh, to be, uh, to, to present you here, Raisa. Raisa is uh, a medical assistant robot as part of collaboration with the UNER Hospital. Uh, so we collaborate with the UNER Hospital, University, uh, Erlanga University Hospital. They use, uh, this robot is already used by them and is very uh, helpful and very, very important for uh, the hospital during this pandemic. And this one also we tried to give you one of our innovation is Violeta is a sterilization robot using ultraviolet technology to, uh, to sterilize the room and also uh, anything in the room uh, for the hospital. And LED IUV lamp also to sterilize from COVID-19. This is also uh, have been used for uh, the hospital. Uh, this is Pak Endarko. Terima kasih Pak Endarko. The other thing is hash suite. Uh, this one is washable protective hazmat suite that very, very difficult to find out during the pandemic. And we try to make this one. And also we we made a mask COVID, uh, mask COVID, this one, uh, masker that have collaboration project with ITS and alumni for the nation. And this is the new one, chamber for swab test. You know that this one is very needed during the swab testing. So we try to make a chamber uh, to, prevent the, uh, to prevent the spreading of the virus. Other thing, we try to uh, we try to sharing ideas to support the nation in dealing with COVID-19. Uh, all of the uh, uh, idea related with uh, uh, COVID-19. So uh, I think uh, related with, with this innovation, uh, if may, I would like to ask uh, uh, Bapak Pramujati to maybe give more uh, explanation about our invention. So, Papa, would you please to give us some, maybe something that uh, needs to explain? Uh, maybe about the, how the production and... Okay, uh, thank you, Pufatma, for explaining all the innovation that has been uh, produced by ITS. I'm not going to add more because all, all has been explained uh, clearly. Uh, I just want to uh, emphasize, please change the element. Yang... Thank you. Okay, sorry, <laughs> sorry for the technical problem. I just wanted to emphasize that the how we are working in this or how we are going to work around the innovation is by uh, using the donation. So we really, we rely on the donation of the people, community. That's why we, we do a fundraising and then we accept donation. And from the donation, we produce some of this uh, uh, product that has been explained by Dr. Fatma, such as visit mass or swap uh, chamber or chamber the robot etc so all of them are produced by 
uh, using the donation contributed by the community. And then once we have the contribution, we are going to give it back, giving back to the community as a, a like a CSR or corporate social responsibility of ITS being uh, exists in the community. So we try to give back to the community based on the donation. I think uh, all of the all of the uh, innovation product has been explained clearly by uh, Dr. Fama. Some of them might not have been here. The information that will be, uh, we still have several product that will be uh, produced by ITS. Uh, it's not here yet, but we, we got funding as well from the government of Indonesia, from the Ministry of and Technology, we receive funding to develop some of the uh, innovation product. So it means that we are not only receiving donation, but also we are working with the government. We are also working with the community to produce all of this thing uh, to help and to work together with people in this uh, pandemic. I think that's thing that I would I would like to add here. So thank you very much to Fatma and to Warma. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Baba. Okay. So I think this is the end of my presentation. Bu Warma, thank you so yeah, much for the you, time. Thank you, Fatma. Thank you, Bu Fatma and Pak Bambang Pramujati yeah, to deliver yeah, brave both ITS as a one of the leading university in technology, especially to contribute in national and regional level in this pandemic condition. So then we start with a, a talk from Professor Dr. Kuo. Professor Kuo, can you hear me? Okay, I can yeah, hear. Yeah, and also Professor Dr. Ko, who delivers about the COVID-19, the challenge and response in Taiwan and also in the Siokang Hospital. I will share the material from here, okay? Okay. Okay, so this is your CV. Okay. And the CV for Professor uh, Ko. Uh, I'm sorry. How many times huh? Okay, I, I can see, okay. see the... Uh, you can talk. see? Yeah. No, not yet. So just, just wait a few minutes. Just wait for a few minutes. Okay. Okay. Okay, so Dr. Kuo, uh, Okay. I also read from here. Dr. Kuo is the uh, director of uh, Kaohsiung Siokang uh, uni uh, Hospital. Okay, and already uh, a graduate from a School of Medicine, Kaohsiung Medical University, and also from the uh, Master from uh, Graduate Institute of Medicine, Kaohsiung Medical University and PhD also from uh, Graduate Institute of Medicine, Kaohsiung Medical University. And uh, since 2018 as a superintendent in Kaohsiung Municipal Siokang Hospital and right now is the director of uh, Kaohsiung Municipal uh, Siokang uh, Hospital. Okay. And then this is some CV that is uh, already mentioned what the responsibility of uh, uh, Professor Dr. Ko during the COVID-19. Okay. Uh, in here, they already mentioned that need to uh, manage everything regarding to uh, manage of the pandemics during uh, COVID-19 and also some publication and also some synergic activity. So this is the CV for Professor Dr. Uh, Ko. And then this is the materials that we will share right now. Pa Ardi, could you share the material? No, this is wrong. Okay, I think it's still loading. Thank you, Pa Ardi, and time is yours. Dr. Ko and uh, Dr. Ko. Okay, I can see. It. So, uh, shall we start? Yes, yes, okay, yes. You can you. start. 
Okay, thank you for this uh, uh, introduction. It's our pleasure to share the experience uh, from uh, the Taiwan Kaohsiung uh, about the quarantine uh, of uh, COVID-19. So uh, in this presentation, uh, we will divide into two parts. And the first part will be share uh, intro, uh, present by uh, me. And the second part will be presented by uh, Professor Zhang. So next slide, please. So uh, it's uh, our outline. So uh, including four parts, uh, including introduction of KMSH and KMU system. And uh, uh, the second part is Taiwan strategy about COVID-19. Then is a Kaohsiung Municipal Shaogang Hospital uh, strategy. Uh, and they, the, finally, we will talk about a challenge and conclusion. Okay, next slide. Okay, so where is the, uh, our uh, K-message? Uh, sorry, uh, this is Taiwan. Uh, uh, we were located at the southern Taiwan. It's not so far uh, away from you. Uh, though, so uh, we have a similar climate. Uh, so next slide, please. Okay, okay. so uh, the Kaohsiung city, the population is about uh, 3 million. Um, the climate uh, you can see it is uh, a tropical uh, monsoon climate. It's, uh, I think it's similar to Subaraya. Uh, so uh, during the COVID-19, this episode, the Kaohsiung is a top three cities with the highest number uh, of infection cases. Next slide, please. So the KMU, uh, Kaohsiung Medical University, uh, so original founded in 1954. Um, the, uh, our uh, university is the first private medical college in Taiwan. Uh, our university comprises seven colleges, including medicine, dental, and so on. So we have encompassed uh, four affiliated uh, medical institution, including Kaohsiung Medical University Hospital, and three affiliated, including Xiaogang, Datong, and Xijin Hospital. Next slide, please. So uh, uh, we will show the, uh, sorry, we will show the location uh, of our uh, hospital. As you seen, uh, the Kaohsiung Medical University and Datong uh, Municipal Datong Hospital is located in the downtown of Kaohsiung. And the uh, Xijin Hospital is located in the harbor of Kaohsiung. And our hospital, Kaohsiung Municipal Xiaogang Hospital, is located near the industrial area. So every uh, hospital has their mission and challenge uh, in our system. Next slide, please. So uh, you can see uh, the Xiaogang uh, Hospital, KMSH, is located near uh, the airport. Uh, the distance for, uh, between uh, our hospital and airport is about two kilometers. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, it means uh, we are responsible for uh, the important mission about the quarantine and invasion control in Kaohsiung City, uh, even in Taiwan. Uh, next slide, please. So in this area, in these years, uh, we do our best uh, in quarantine and infection control. So we uh, got an award, uh, including SARS and Dengue Fever Award, as uh, they show the contribution of our hospital. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, until now, uh, we have uh, exam about 500 and 26 cases, uh, although uh, one confirmed case, but we do many, many things uh, in quarantine of COVID-19. The next part, I will shift to uh, Professor Zhang to introduce the policy of government and hospital. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, thank you, Professor's good introductions. Uh, next slide, please. 
Okay, this die show uh, the whole world conditions. Uh, we know about 4.7 million cases in whole world got COVID-19 and uh, about uh, 31,000 days cases uh, in, in the world. And the case fatality rate is about 6.63. I know Indonesia's uh, up to now, I think maybe 18,000 cases in Indonesia and uh, about uh, 100, uh, 1,200 uh, cases deaths. And about the case fatality rate is about 6.6%. Next slide, please. But in our country, we have all total 440 confirmed cases. And you can see the left side, uh, left side of the slide. And we have only 55 indigenous cases. And most of the cases are imported, about eight, more than 80%. And you can see this is Kaohsiung city. And you can see we are only 49 cases in our uh, cities. And the Taiwan ranking the 125 uh, among the 185 countries in terms of confirmed cases per million people. Next slide, please. Uh, because we are very close to China, but uh, why our country's COVID-19 cases is so small? I think maybe uh, we have experience because Taiwan has such experience. In 2003, Taiwan recorded its first SARS cases in 2003. Next slide, please. And our uh, former president, vice president of Chen Jianlan, uh, at that time, during 2003, he is a former minister of health. And our president, Tsai Ing-wen, she's also the former minister, main, main lead affair council republic of China. It means he know, uh, uh, the, but he know the character of China's. So they are all well-trained and experienced uh, officers. And then in, in the below, you can see, except again, uh, the Premier Su Zhenchang, he's also in charge of the type, new, Taipei city, uh, new Taipei City County. He's a mayor at that time. And the right side, you can see, it is the Minister of Health and Welfare. It is, uh, we call it Chen, Shi, Chen Shizhong, because uh, he is also um, Deputy Minister of Health during 2005 and during 2008. So he's also experienced uh, officers. In the left side, he's a vice premier, Dr. Chen Qimai. He is also a doctor and he's a student of the former uh, vice president of Chen Jianlan. He got master of pub, uh, public health uh, master degree. So all of the key persons have well training and have experienced teams. That's that, please. So this is a secret one. Next slide. So uh, all of the key person, they understand and they recognize the crisis. In 2004, the year after SARS outbreak, the Taiwan government established the National Health Command Center, NHCC. NHCC is a part of a disaster management center that's focused on the large outbreak response, such as uh, operation command point for a direct communication among the center, regional, and the local authorities. And NHCC unified a center command system that included CECC, the biology pathogen uh, disease command center, and so on. That's like, please. So uh, another reason, because uh, China's, uh, about five years ago, uh, at that time, President Ma is our president because China have good relationship with President Ma. But uh, because uh, uh, in the recent times, uh, uh, as we know, China uh, did not very uh, like our President Tsai. So he closed the, uh, initially they opened, they used the open policy, but now they use a closed policy and they prohibit the independent tour it means backpacking uh, passenger to Taiwan since August 1st, 2019. That's right. Initially, we think it is a bad thing because economy will be influenced. But uh, up, to, up to now, I think it is a good thing because uh, a lot of passengers from China didn't come to Taiwan. So the COVID-19 cases uh, will become 
small. So I think it is a good thing until now. Uh, because on December 31, 2019, WHO was notified pneumonia of unknown cause in Wuhan, in China. And Taiwanese officer began to board a plane and access passenger on direct flights from Wuhan for fever and pneumonia symptoms before passengers who depressed. As early as January 5, 2020, notification was expanded to include any individual who had traveled to Wuhan in the past 14 days and have a fever or symptom of upper airway infections. Next slide, please. So uh, we, our CDC, send two infectious doctors. The right is a Dr. Zhuang Yingjin, and the left side is Dr. Hong Minnan. And then two doctors go to the Wuhan city and conduct an on-site investigation. And they tell us one important information. They tell us the COVID-19 may be a human-to-human -human transmission disease. Because at that time, they find several cases uh, an admission to hospital, but they go to they did not go to the wet market of Huanan market. So human to human transmission is possible. And, and they go to China on January 13, 2002. After they come back to our country, COVID-19 as a notable infectious disease since January 15. That's the place. So in January 20s, Taiwan CDC officials activated the CCC for severe special infectious pneumonia on the NCC. The CCC coordinated many uh, various ministers, including the Minister of Transportation, Economics, Labor, and Education, Environment Protection, Admissions. Next slide, please. And prudent action and uh, Rapid response because of good team, so we can early deployment. Next slide, please. So after SARS 2003's amendment of a Communicable Disease Control Act and the regular regulation since that times, and uh, after SARS, we have a medical care institution mobilizations, and uh, in our whole country we have two twenty thousand isolation room with fourteen thousands ventilations and we enhancement our hospital infection control in taiwan every hospital have to receive the hospital control hospital infection control audit every two years including holding gaoshung Mainland university hospital and our hospital gaoshung municipal shogun hospitals and uh, we have standardized of our communicable disease surveillance and the reporting and optimize on Board in quarantine, including health check and the travel histories. Next slide, please. So this is our hospital's isolation room in our ninth floors. It was built in 2003, about seven, about 16 years ago. And uh, it is our emergency quarantine observation area. It's also built in 16 years ago in after SARS 2003. Next slide, please. So, because our hospital is very close to the Interna Kaohsiung International Airport, so we have airport fever screening since 2003. Every passenger go to the custom. Before go to the custom, they will see the thermal detections. Next slide, please. The infrared thermal sensor in the airport, you can see there are many infrared thermal sensors in the airport, so every patient have a fever. They will catch by this machine. Next slide, please. And the passenger uh, will receive the centennial fever screen process. And the customer of our CDC officers will check his body temperature again and uh, check his, their blood to make a test. And in recent days, uh, dengue fever from Southeast countries will be checked. Next slide, please. And uh, during the, since December 31, uh, airplane on board quarantine announcement was also be done. Next slide. And uh, 
quarantine measure for inbound travel, including the check-in before boarding and the quarantine onboard quarantine announcement and the home quarantine notice and the fever screening symptom check and the special taxi or renting cars and home quarantine for 14 days, a series of procedure will be performed. Next slide, please. So every uh, one, if they should be home quarantines, it means they cannot use the public transportations and they require to take home quarantine for 14 days and they just can take a special taxi or rent rental cars. What is a special taxi? Next slide, please. Special taxi, it means uh, this taxi have a special equipment. You can see it is a plastic curtain and in the car and a separate two part. The, in the front side, the driver uh, in this area, the passenger in this area, because it is very dangerous. So in Gaussi city, uh, we have a uh, four uh, taxis, a special taxi uh, for this equipment. And uh, the taxi need to clean. So in our hospitals, we have a cleaning site and prepare the detergent and the bleaching liquid for uh, uh, clean, for help them to clean these taxis. Next slide, please. And uh, so we have enforcement of 14 days home isolation and quarantine, context of confirmed cases of passenger from epidemic area. Until now, we uh, use these policies. And also we have adequate supply of PPE, personal protection equipment and the other material. And the prohibition of the dis disseminating disinformations uh, because after SARS, we learned a lot of experience. Maybe a uh, uh, disseminated uh, disinformation will influence our uh, societies. And uh, after SARS, because at SARS areas, we just only three doctors uh, specialize uh, or special in our CDC. But now, because we recruit and train the special in Taiwan CDC, until now, we have more than 20 uh, doctors uh, in our CDC. Next slide, please. So, onboard quarantine announcement should have uh, uh, a serious uh, cooperation, especially for uh, every, per every, uh, every person. Next slide. So, this, pay, uh, this person, they, he have to uh, check his body temperature and uh, uh, we will call these patients and uh, he have to answer these questions. And uh, our hospital uh, will prepare the personal protection equipment and the government will give us uh, personal protection equipment. Next slide, please. For the mask, mask uh, the first implement of mask rationing plans was done in Macau in January 20, 22. But in Taiwan, after two days later, our Taiwan followed these plans. We have prohibition export the mask. So we will have much mask. And Taiwan mask regional plans ensure masks are fairly and equally distributed since February 6, 2020s. And uh, in the pharmacy uh, store, you can use our health insurance cards to buy masks. And uh, after several days, and we can use APB system, we call this e-mask system to buy uh, masks, especially in the younger person, they have a cell phone and they can use uh, the APB system to buy masks. And also we have a national production mask teams because we have these teams and we have machines. So until now, uh, one day we can produce over 20 million masks. Next slide, please. So about resource allocations, uh, the CECC take an active role in ensure allocation, including setting the price of masks and using government funds and the military personnel to increase the mask productions. Next slide, please. So the home quarantine and home quarantine for 14 days and our government have embarrassment, uh, one person will give him 
1,000 NT dollars to make them to collaboration. And uh, we have cell phone GPS uh, monitors. If this patient, uh, he should be home quarantined and he did not follow this rule, he would be fine, if violated, would be fine. 200,000 NT dollars. Next slide, please. And because our CECC holds a daily press conference, this is Dr. Chen Shizhong. Next slide, please. Also, Minister of Health and Welfare. And he tell every details every day. And uh, we have a toll free number 1922 and a server hotline for citizens to report suspicious symptoms and answer questions. The government addressed the issue of, disease, of this disease stigma and compassion for this affected by providing food and a frequent health check and encouraged for those under quarantine. Next slide, please. So we have a spacious uh, system. We have NHIA systems uh, because we have national health insurance admission and uh, national immigration agency. We integrate this patient's past 14 days travel histories. And we use this data and we use this method VPN and we can know every patient, every, every one, the foreigner enters when enter to Taiwan and we can trust his histories. And this patient have ever been to outside country and use these systems. We can get the dedicated travel histories. So we also have an electric uh, uh, through their mobile phone. Those identified as a high risk patient will be monitored electrical through their mobile phones. Next slide, please. Oh, next slide, please. Okay, so transparency and information sharing and information collaboration is the purpose of our system overhauls. Next slide, please. So we are shaking our border quarantine and the early diagnosis and treatment of confirmed cases and home isolation and constant isolation and restriction the social distance, mobilize and location of medical care resources and the extent they use the big data and the smart technology to combat the COVID-19. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, because we are product many uh, masks, so we can help many countries such as Japan and such as San Lucia. Okay, this is the second part. Next slide three, please. And next slide. Okay, uh, I was talking about uh, our Kaohsiung Manual Shagun Hospital because our hospital is very close to an airport. And during 2014 and 2015, uh, we can, you can see this, we have uh, many dengue fever cases, more than 15,000 dengue fever cases in 2014. And in 2015, over 40,000 dengue cases in here. But in Kaohsiung, almost 20,000 cases in here. But you can see in 2016 and 2017 or 18, the dengue fever case was dramatically decrease. Why? Next slide, please. Because we found the dengue is the source, almost is imported cases from uh, Southeast Asia, uh, such as travel or by our, by our, our citizens. From China, from uh, any country, if they uh, got dengue fear and go to uh, Kaohsiung, if we did not take early prevention, maybe we got the dengue will separate to our societies. Next slide, please. So our hospital set an airport screening and uh, 
in the Kaohsiung Shagong Hospital. Our hospital set the airport care stations. In this care station, we have many members, and this member cooperation with Kaohsiung city government and our CDC members, and they cooperate with the passenger who have a fever, and they will refer to our CDC office and check blood. If the dengue rapid test is positive, then, they, then this patient will refer to our hospital and the other hospital to admission and the isolation. So it is a protective uh, way to decrease these dengue cases. Next slide, please. Okay, this is a dengue rapid test kit. Because we have this kit and uh, uh, widely used, so we can early detections. Next slide, please. So migration sources and rapid test kit and education and the, and the eradication mosquito breeding sources. And you can see the dengue case was dramatically decreased. Next slide, please. So the cases in Kaohsiung, 14,000 cases in 2014, 2015, is 19,000, but until to now, there are little cases, indigenous cases in Kaohsiung cities. So we got Dengue Award. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay, another thing is we talk about the battle against overseas epidemic prevention. And uh, we, uh, our hospital, uh, also have to set up an on-site inspection of the Kaohsiung Airport. Next slide, please. Because our hospital in, is uh, also an international airport and a port refer hospital to CDC. So uh, during the epidemic of COVID-19, patients will are diverted according to the travel level from the epidemic. Those who are high risk will be transferred to Kaohsiung Municipal Xiaogang Hospital Emergency Room screening stations or other hospital. And also in Kaohsiung International Airport, the, they also set up a COVID-19 inspection station and they carry out the oral pharyngeal assembly of symptomatic passengers. This manpower is supported by six medical centers, including Kaohsiung Medical University Hospital in Southern Taiwan. And our hospital participated in the initiation, the planning, and the borrow some personnel protection equipment to these stations, KIA stations. Next slide, please. So this is a KIA airport station, on-site inspection station. They take 129 case samples, but only zero uh, got COVID-19. This is our Kaohsiung Municipal Xiaogang Hospital emergency inspection station. We take almost 500 cases. Uh, we just find one cases, COVID-19. Next slide, please. So this is old. Uh, emergency quality observation area. But today we have a new, our emergency quality observation areas. So you can see this slide and uh, these doctors do not need to wear in the gown. He just ask because we have a, a, a equipment to separate the patient and the doctor. So he can very easy to take a, uh, to take a sample. And this is uh, our doctor to to uh, in this room, in this area, to uh, make, a, make a decision. And especially fever cases, they can send to this room to check. Next slide, please. And this new quarantine observation room was sponsored by, uh, partially donated by another company, United States companies. And uh, this uh, new quarantine observation room uh, have uh, 10 rooms. We are prepared 
for this room for another episode. Especially, I think maybe in this、uh, winter, in this autumn, maybe with a second wave of COVID-19. So our hospital prepare this new quarantine observation area. Next slide, please. So this is about medical waste cleaning.、Uh, according to our data, you can see in February the amount、uh, compared to the 2019 and the 2020, the amount of medical waste is increased about nine percent. But、uh, in May it decreased one point six percent. In April it decreased three point three percent medical waste amount. Why? Because hospital. There are usually general much medical waste at the peak of outbreak, but because elective surgery during this period was dropped, so it might offset some the rise in the waste in the pandemic. So because in this times we don't have many cases in our hospital, so totally、uh, the medical waste was decreased. The CDC say the medical waste from the COVID nineteen may be tra treated as the same days as. Regular medical medical vest, but person we care this medical vest should have to wear the boots and the wear gears,、uh, such as long sleeve gowns on the sick gloves to handle this medical vest. Next slide, please. And our Shanghai hospital is a community hospital, so、uh, we united the health system and the civil affairs system. And the police agency and the campus to establish a close field of video regional joint defense, because time limit. So please jump to、uh, next next slide. A、uh, next slide. A、uh, next slide. A、uh, next slide. Okay, I use this slide to explain uh, uh, our uh, performance because uh, our. Hospital donate many iPad to the police agency and the many iPad to the civil affairs, Shanghai Hospital District Civil Affairs. Do many donate many iPad to this uh civil affairs agency and do many iPad to our elementary school in Shanghai Hospital. So we can use our uh hospital computer and use the webinar methods to. And I in the our hospital and the via the internet to education the policemen and education the campus students. So it is very easy and very convenient. So we can say it is a Shanghai hospital integrate the health system police agency to establish cross field video regional joint defense. And next slide. And the Shanghai hospital. And the cooperation with the spectral chip companies to promote one to promote to build a fast and accurate and saving the COVID nineteen protections、uh, test. And、uh, you can see、uh, because this company, Spectrum Chips Company, they developed a very uh, uh, good method. This method can quality the rapid screening equipment for a coronavirus, and this equipment there are several advantage. Please see next slide. We can take patients' blood one sample and、uh, use this kit, and the kit may be show positive, and because this kit is very sensitive, the sensitive. Sensitivity is more than 100 times that of of the existing facing face the screen test. So this test,、uh, which can exclude the most false negative and the most false positive test, so it is very also it is very rapid. It is rapid screen about 10 to 15 minutes. It is also very accurate, and it is, can be. Quantitative to detect the IgG IgM, and it is、uh, the white is very small because of palm type, so it is easy to care to carry, and it is real time. And because it is positive, we can use the form app to return this data to immediately 
to grasp the equipment situation. So it is a key, new key technology to help the world. But uh, this equipment is waiting for Taiwan FDA proof. Next slide, please. But we still have many challenges. The first is we, have, we don't have a remdesivir. We don't have very good medication because this medication may be a partially effective, but it is not available in most country. And it's still, until now, we don't have vaccine. And we don't have no trust rapid test. We don't have high sensitive, high specificity, and low cost and a quick test. Next slide, please. So I make conclusion because Taiwan government learned from his 2003 SARS experience and a, a group of well-trained and experienced teams of officers can quickly respond and the early recognize this crisis and daily briefing to the public and simplify the health messenger. The government was able to reassure to the public by delivering timely and accurate transparency. So Taiwan and also I think Kaohsiung Municipal Hospital and the Kaohsiung Medical University Hospital is an example of how our society can respond quickly to a crisis and to protect the interest of its citizen. Next slide. And thank you for uh, your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Ko and Dr. Ko. Thank you very much. Okay. We have several questions. Maybe we will continue during the question and answer because it's a very, very interesting. Some question already rise to, uh, in the uh, Zoom chat. So maybe in the uh, time of a question and answer, we will deliver to you, okay? And then we will continue with Dr. Lin. Dr. Lin, are you in, the, in that uh, area, Dr. Lin? Okay. Can you hear Thank me? You. Hello. Yeah, yes. Hello. Good, Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Dr. Lin. So uh, this is the CV for Dr. Uh, Chun Yu Lin. Okay. And right now in the Kaohsiung Medical University Hospital. Okay. And as a head of infection control center in this uh, medical university hospital. And this is the uh, responsibility during COVID-19. She's already mentioned in the uh, share about the CV of uh, Dr. Lin. And then uh, we also have some publications that already mentioned there. And also some of the uh, synergic activity. And uh, Dr. Lin is also uh, won the award of uh, patent approval in Kaohsiung Medical University. So uh, we can start the talk, Dr. Lin. Yes, thank yes, you. Yes, okay. Please. And then we will share the uh, material from here. So time is yours. So please, okay. Dr. Lin. Thank you very much for inviting me uh, to give this short talk. Uh, so let's go to the next slide. Next. Okay. Yes. First of all, I think uh, during a new uh, epidemic, we can divide uh, the diseases uh, into four phases among the epidemics. So the first one should be the imported cases. And the second phase, we usually to combat with those sporadic cases. And the phase three usually we named, it's like a community spreading out. And then we come to the recovery phase. So we have several different strategy from the government to the hospital and even the community. Uh, so uh, during the first phase, we do a lot of things like the border control and also the quarantine. Nowadays, those travelers come into Taiwan, they have to be quarantined in a, uh, in a hotel or their home for two weeks, the incubation period of COVID-19. During the second phase, 
uh, we do a lot of uh, effort to make the early detection of those confirmed or those suspected case. And we try to contain the uh, diseases in our community. Once the situation uh, getting worse and we have or you have a lot of cases, then it's good to make the severity category, try to pick up those patients with highly mortality or the, uh, poor prognosis, treat them to avoid uh, death. And also try to do something to restriction the spreading out in the community. And uh, if we are lucky, then we will come into the uh, fourth phases, and uh, name the recovery phase. And let's do those things to uh, rearrange our resource and uh, rehabilitation. During this COVID-19 pandemic, there are several efforts. Uh, people think it's effective to come back with this disease, including social distancing and also contact tracing. It is very successful in Taiwan. This contact tracing lead us to uh, contain those cases in the community as early as possible to avoid further transmission. And in Taiwan, we also do a lot of things to uh, enhance the people to wear the surgical mask, not only for those sick people, but also for all the healthy people. If he or she have to uh, has to uh, went into some crowded place or the hospital, and we do a lot of effort to uh, ask people in Taiwan to uh, wash their hand correctly to enhance the hand hygiene and protect themselves. Next, please. So let's talk about some uh, transmission routes of this uh, SARS-CoV-2. This is the virus which uh, uh, make the COVID-19. As we know, majorly it's the droplets and also aerosol and the, the fomites, which is the contaminated uh, environment surveys like uh, your desk or even something like your mobile phone. It can transmit the virus indirectly by direct contact with those uh, uh, surfaces. And nowadays, even the effects uh, could be uh, isolated for some uh, infective virus. So it could be another uh, possible route. But all those things, I mean, for droplets, for aerosol, and the fomites transmission. Uh, it has to come to your mucosa. Uh, majorly, it's your nose, your mouth, or your eyes. So uh, it's a good way to protect yourself by wearing a surgical mask. Uh, in that case, you won't touch your nose, mouth, or eyes very frequently. And probably you have the chance to clean your hands correctly and uh, interrupt the transmission route of this virus. Next, please. Uh, but the, the COVID-19 is a little bit different from SARS in 2003. The major reason is that uh, if you expose to the virus, you will develop usually uh, symptoms within five days, so-called its incubation period. Uh, but it's different to SARS in 2003 because COVID-19, or we say those uh, SARS-CoV-2, can be transmitted to another people uh, when uh, the infected per person are sim uh, asymptomatic, or we say pre-symptomatic. So the contagious period or the infectious period, it's start from 2.3 days before the symptom onset. And uh, this period can continue up to five to 10 days after symptom onset. And we say the most infectious 
uh, duration or a period, usually it's just a, around the day when people start to have less symptoms. So this is a major problem because uh, people usually don't uh, have any idea that they have been infected if he or she did not have any kinds of uh, symptoms. But pre-symptomatic pre transmission is a big problem for the uh, COVID-19 and also for the COVID-19 uh, containment. Next, please. So this red, uh, sorry, uh, let's, yeah. So this period, I mean, uh, usually two days before the symptom onset, it's a very critical phase. We try to uh, catch down or we try to contain those spreading out in the community. Next, please. So this is a cartoon to show the uh, transmission in the community. Uh, as you know, majorly this disease happened or attack those adults. Usually in Taiwan, it's between 20 years old up to 50 years old. But they have their children and also they have their uh, household contact, the elderly in their home. So once the community transmission happened and uh, probably the school transmission will follow. Also the intra-familial uh, transmission happened. Next, please. So people get, sorry, sorry, previous one, please. Uh, so people once has uh, developed uh, his or her symptoms, they will come to the hospital. But if they cannot be diagnosed correctly and uh, as early as possible, they will return to the community. Or sometimes they will be admitted to the hospital. And the worst thing is that the uh, uh, intra-hospital spreading out happen. So if there are clustering events in the hospital, then people will spreading out the virus into the community furthermore. So this is a very uh, critical situation, especially, I mean, uh, as mentioned, those pre-symptomatic transmission. Next, please. So this is two models to show those things. Uh, you can see the uh, red one is so-called symptom-based uh, detection. So usually, uh, if we just ask regarding those symptoms, then people don't think he or she has get infected. But we have to do those things like the uh, blue one. It's called so contact tracing. So when you or me perform contact tracing well, we can shorten, we can shorten the duration of uh, 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 infected cases and the, the exposure time up to two or three days to avoid further transmission in the community. So you can see several different models uh, tell us that if we ask about the contact history rather than those symptoms, then we can shorten the duration that uh, infected people uh, transmit their virus into others for at least two or three days. So this is the policy in most hospital in Taiwan. We look at those contact history uh, even more than those symptoms for each individual. So we will ask those contact history and also like uh, traveling, like occupation, like their contact to the confront case uh, and the clustering history for each uh, individual. The second, we will ask about the symptoms. So uh, in the beginning of this pandemic, 
in Taiwan, uh, the most important question is uh, talking about the contact history, or we say like TOCC. However, once the uh, epidemics go into the community, then the symptoms or no symptoms uh, will be a very important uh, question to uh, trafficking or to make the different deposition of your patients. Next, please. So I will talk about trafficking control in the hospital. Next. This is the map of Kaohsiung Medical University Hospital. We have uh, originally five gates in our hospital. Once the epidemic happened, we closed three of them and uh, we just uh, left two gates uh, to allow the people get into the hospital. One is gate A and another one is gate B. Here is our emergency department. And we try to uh, avoid those patients or those visitors who have the contact history to get into our hospital in the very beginning of this epidemic. So we do something like the outdoor clinic section. We do something like the drive-through pharmacy, just allow people to take the medicine outside of the main building. We also do the triage and the outdoor screening area uh, in our emergency uh, department, even the x-ray uh, examination outside of the door. Next, please. Uh, you can see this is our uh, ten, uh, emergency department. So people can be uh, examined or to collect the specimen uh, outdoor in the in, uh, emergency department. And now even in the uh, temporary building outside of our main building. And we can also perform the x-ray examination uh, outside of our main building. Next, please. So by this way, we try to uh, divide our patients or visitors into different place to do the best trafficking control within our hospital to avoid those crossover or the contamination between different patients. Next, please. So we, we think about those contacting point within the, uh, with the community in a hospital. As you know, uh, some hospital like Kaohsiung Medical University Hospital, we are rather big and uh, we have some tiny mall, even the parking lot. For, for us, those places, they were uh, contacting points with the community. So we have to set some rule to make a good uh, management and control. And we also have to uh, good do very good personal control for our patients, caregivers, healthcare workers, and also visitors. Next. Next, please. Uh, from the viewpoint of a hospital, we have to have very structural commanding system. Next, please. And we have to collect those up-to-date uh, disease virus information and uh, educate all our staff and uh, the public. Next, please. We have to uh, continuously tracking our medical staff regarding their international or domestic traveling and monitor their healthy status day by day, especially when they were returning from other countries. We also do the uh, pre-administrial and uh, evaluating our performance. Next, please. Uh, like this, we do it uh, before this epidemic. And we, okay, next one is good. 
and we also updating those standard uh, care procedures not only for those patients with suspicious or uh, the confirmed cases, but also for all the words and even the examination departments to postpone those non-emergent procedure or e examination during this pandemic. We also notifying to the government and try to treat or isolate those suspected cases. Next, please. Yeah, you can see this is the temporary uh, building outside of our emergency department. And always try to update in the inventory of your personal protective equipment and even the drug supply. Controlling those patients with different history and the symptoms when they were entering the hospital and uh, try to direct the correct flow or uh, the correct pathway. Next, please. So this is our outdoor uh, screening station in the beginning of this uh, pandemic. So the entrance or the gateway control, we cut down the entrance number. We uh, cut down also the uh, visiting hour. By the health insurance card, you know there is a I, I uh, there is a chip on the that card. We can read the history of each individual and each uh, visitors. We also ask them to show the self-reported questionnaire to check the history. We measure the body temperature between they were entering the hospital. We screening for the symptoms. So it's two important things. One is history. Another one keyword is symptoms. So we make the different routes or we postpone the non-emergent procedures. Next one. And we leave those uh, pharmacy outside of our main building. So people can just wait outside, outdoors, and uh, pick up their medicine without entering the uh, hospital. Next, please. And also you can postpone those uh, non-emergent operations and examinations. Next, please. And uh, in our hospital, we say it's like a yellow card, red card to set different pathway in, within the hospital and avoid crossover of different risky patients. Next. And uh, we also try to keep the information transparent to our medical staffs, faculties, and also the public. And uh, the most important things I think during this pandemic is to clean and to disinfect your environment as possible. Because as we know, the four mice will be also a very important transmission route for SARS-CoV-2. So we do this like all in one boxes to make the uh, cleaning as correct as possible and as efficient as possible. Next, please. So what could we do more than 2003? You know, the social distancing is very important for this SARS-CoV-2, at least uh, uh, probably one 0.5 meters or even two meters apart will uh, make uh, both one safe. So we try to uh, develop those mobile phone warning apps. Next, please. And uh, in, uh, sorry, pre previous one, please. So we also uh, develop those uh, overcrowded warning in Taiwan. The government said that uh, almost everyone who are traveling uh, domestically, they, they have their own mobile. So uh, with these apps, we can be located and uh, uh, each such thing, uh, place or the market, we can check how many people they were now and try to avoid those two crowded area uh, before uh, we plan to go that, that site. And we also have those things like a mask sailing map 
it's real time. So everyone can find a correct place to buy his own uh, masks. And uh, the healthy insurance card with chip, as I, I mentioned, and also Dr. John mentioned. And we do rather good contact tracing. We do home isolation and the quarantine. And we also uh, uh, make them to use their own uh, mobile phone to make sure they are still in the right place. And I think the public education with a lot of new social media like Facebook, like Line, it's also very important things to enhance the hand hygiene for each person. Uh, of course, we can try to do the earlier and the broader virus detection in the future, but it's not very easy, but we can try to do it um, more than 2003, of course. Next, please. This is the uh, ship named uh, uh, Diamond Princesses. Uh, you know this is the most uh, uh, serious uh, uh, transmission and uh, infection situation uh, in this boat. This boat came into Taiwan. Uh, I remember it's the last day of January. And uh, there are a lot of uh, visitors came to Taiwan. Next, please. So we just uh, try to uh, trace and uh, locate the mobile phone they have and uh, to show the map where, less, uh, where those places they were more risky to our public. Mm -hmm. So uh, people in Taiwan, we can yeah, check yeah, whether yeah. I or he uh, went this site and uh, to avoid further <laughs> Next. Yes. Next, please. So I think next, please. Everyone has mobile phone, even more than cars and uh, motorcycles. So mobile phone uh, during these pandemics, I think it's a rather good uh, device to follow each one and to give the correct information uh, both to the government site and uh, to the uh, personal site. Of course, we can always argue regarding the privacy, but the, this is a rather big uh, debate. I think we can discuss it later. Next, please. So this is the overall strategy for a single hospital. But I think a, a lot of things is rather uh, important for uh, both of us to come back with this virus. Next, please. And the uh, Taiwanese people, we are familiar with those uh, different diseases, including seasonal influenza, including enterovirus in children, and also dengue fever. So uh, people in Taiwan, we are familiar with those surgical masking, coughing behavior, and also hand hygiene, because we are educated uh, how to debate, uh, sorry, how to combat with the enterovirus. And the people in Taiwan, we are also familiar with those uh, history taking, uh, including traveling and the contact history, because we are uh, always threatened by uh, dengue virus. So uh, those things is uh, uh, familiar to people in Taiwan and uh, also uh, in your site. So uh, with the similar idea uh, and the function of social media, the public education is very important to enhance each one uh, to protect themselves if the lockdown is not possible uh, in your site and also in Taiwan. Next. So the conclusion should be uh, that this is a real battle, but we have to work like a team, including the government side and the hospital side, also uh, each person. And we have to carry out very good uh, administration management and enhance the concept of self-protection 
updating those information, uh, keep the flexibility. Next. Also, in the future, I think this will be uh, come uh, come through within probably very short term, short time within one or two years. You know, the telemedicine is um, most popular and the most uh, hot topic now, and also those non-touch techniques. And uh, uh, in our hospital, we try to do the uh, mechanical ventilation for patients with uh, a loss ventilator uh, with the promote uh, controlling system. So even we don't have to touch our patients and we don't have to touch our rear machine, the ventilators, but we can change the setting up, also do the uh, good adjustment for the patients. So I think in the future, the telemedicine and uh, the non-touch techniques will help us to fight those uh, very uh, infectious or contagious uh, virus uh, and to protect all the healthcare workers. Next, please. Thank you for your uh, listening and uh, each question will be very welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Lin. It's a very interesting talk to us in here. And uh, for all of the participants, we already have uh, several questions and answers. So uh, Dr. Uh, Ko, Dr. Ko and Dr. Lin, so this is uh, some question and, uh, questions from, from the participant. I already uh, have some uh, question in here based on the uh, Zoom chat. Okay, I will be share the screen. So then uh, please. Uh, so uh, could you see the uh, question and answer the question for uh, from the participant? Uh, Dr. Uh, Lin, Dr. Kuo and Dr. Ko, could you see the the question and question from the participant. Could you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So for the first, uh, Ibu Putri is represent for uh, Bapak Hebi. Bapak Hebi is the head of uh, Department of Administration and Economic and Regional Own Enterprises in Surabaya. They have uh, two major questions, especially regarding to uh, what the policy in Taiwan, especially. This is like a, a like a public policy from the government, especially how Taiwan organized the market, especially to make the building very safety because this is a part of the uh, uh, area that might be is uh, very very uh, vulnerable because this condition during the uh, COVID-19. So how they can manage the building is safe, especially for market because in Indonesia we have traditional market and also some modern market. But the, the problem is in here is always, uh, the market is always a place in which uh, the uh, virus can be spread. And also how Taiwan organized about this one and how to restore and also rebuilds of the economic. Because in here, if we have a problem in the market, so then market will be closed. Then this is a big problem for the economy. Maybe you can answer this question first, Dr. Ko. Okay, uh, I try to answer this question because uh, I, I, I'm just a physician, but I try to answer this question. Uh, about a question to one, on how Taiwan organized the market, uh, including the building safety and then the interaction between the seller and the buyer and the transactions. I think because uh, in Taiwan, it is now, it is the same normal conditions uh, because Taiwan have a very, very real uh, cases uh, just just up to days we have 31 days we have no any cases so I think uh, the government will be gradually uh, open the policies uh, such as uh, uh, they open the market if 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 this market or oh, the department can um, use a 
open uh, distance, such as uh, human to human, the distance is uh, far away from 1.5 meters. And they can, they can uh, in this department to enjoy their food and uh, they can go to the uh, department store. So uh, the interaction between the selling and the buyer, uh, I think our government will be gradually to open their regulations and uh, how to restore and uh, rebuild the economic. I think the first one is the business man, the business trips between uh, Taiwan and the other countries. And uh, yesterday, the newspaper say they want to do a study, uh, such as a, a businessman from San Francisco, and they, they want to go to Kaohsiung. Initially, they will in San Francisco in the United States. They, he can take the COVID-19 nasal swap first in San Francisco first. And then this passenger, this businessman go to Taiwan and in Taiwan airport, and he also received the second times COVID-19 swap. And uh, both of this swap sure negative. And this passenger and uh, this businessman can be, can be free in Taiwan. I think it is a method, but uh, according to a newspaper, uh, this, method, this study will be performed in June, not in this May. I think maybe it is a method to restore the economic because Taiwan is an island. It needs to uh, interaction with other countries. So how to make the passenger into Taiwan is very uh, important question. And about a question too, uh, how many Taiwan, how Taiwan managed the biohazard waste containing 19? As just as I mentioned, because the medical waste containing the COVID-19 is the same as other medical waste. So first we will use the plastic bag and uh, to tie it and then transport this waste containing COVID-19 to a company. And this company will, I think they will burn it, but they have to take care of their uh, health and well the good personal protection equipment. And uh, the two questions, part two, how hospital in Taiwan management, uh, there was water during the COVID because I think because uh, we have a very good uh, distilled water system. So in Taiwan, the water containing COVID-19 uh, is not a problem because we have a good uh, subway uh, system. So we just, as previously uh, uh, condition, we don't have no special uh, treatment for this kind of uh, situations. And uh, Dr. Ni will have uh, some uh, uh, answer or comment to this question. Hey. Maybe I can add some short words here. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we have some temporary uh, building in our emergency department. So we try to use also those toilets. They were like uh, movable or like, <laughs> uh, yes, it's very temporary. So uh, at that kind of situation, we just put those, uh, uh, chloride uh, things, the uh, detergent, yes, the detergent into the toilet. Yes, so I think it's uh, like uh, 5,000 ppm uh, bleaching, bleaching liquid. Yes, bleaching liquid. Yes, like that. So, so I, I think this virus uh, 
because it has uh, envelope, so it can be just uh, uh, destroyed or uh, deactivated by uh, loss detergent uh, easily. So it's not really a very dangerous situation, but we have to to do it correctly. Yes. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Lin and Dr. Uh, Dr. Ko. But uh, the, the first question is about the uh, building safety. For example, in, in, as I mentioned previously, in the market especially, because in Indonesia, as in, in Taiwan, you are not close the, the market, but in Indonesia, we are also not close the market. But the problem is when one person in the market, they have detected as a positive of coronavirus, then uh, all of the building will be stopped. So stop for 14 days. And then this is a, some uh, like a, a, a problem in here because they say regarding to the economic and any others, uh, is it also uh, in the point of view of a health, is it also a need to close the market like that one or any other things that can be do? We, we have one event uh, in our worship. Uh, the soldier, I mean the Navy soldiers, they came into the, uh, a lot of big uh, market and uh, we didn't really uh, close each market for two weeks. We just closed each market for two days and uh, uh -huh. do very carefully uh, environment cleaning and the disinfection. Uh -huh. But we send the short message like SMS to okay. all the mobile phone when they were located at the same time point with those infected patients. Uh, you know, we, we just try to locate each yeah. person if he or she uh, at the same time point together with those, even it's very 50 meters away, then they will get the message. And okay. we said the self Yes, you have to do the self uh, quarantine, but you don't have to do it within your uh, home, but you have to be aware of that. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you very much. I think it's already answer number one and number two. And this is uh, another question. We still have, uh, I think, one, two, three, four questions. Uh, the first is regarding to in the hospital, because if they are the patient, just only use the ventilator, and how the circulation in the uh, in the uh, coffee room, especially in the quarantine room. Okay, I try to answer question three. If there the patient use only ventilators and how circulation uh, in COVID rooms. I think because uh, all of the COVID-19 cases in Taiwan, they are living in the negative pressure rooms. So uh, if this patient uh, will use ventilation, and ventilators, and he still live in the negative pressure rooms. So I think uh, it, is, it is okay because it is also still in the negative pressure uh, rooms. So it is very safe. But uh, because our in our hospital, we have only four uh, negative pressure rooms. And uh, what, uh, I think maybe, uh, Sometimes, uh, because the four isolation room was full, and then we will uh, let this patient to a single room, and the past this single room we made uh, some change, and uh, we will make the uh, circulation a, a little negative pressure. But if we don't have negative pressure rooms, we will use this patient, leave this patient in a single room, and uh, close the. Uh, close the circulation and uh, open the window and the make this room, uh, the air and the directory uh, into outside and there cannot be circulation uh, with our hospitals, uh, others rooms. So this is question mm -hmm. three. And a question four, how to monitor patients who have returned home because of their risk for potentially Retransmissions. Uh, I think because in Taiwan, uh, this patient got COVID nineteen, and he have to take at least three samples, 
at a series three samples and the all three sample is all negative negative three sample if uh okay. he, he got uh, just one or two positive and uh, negative and the three sample is positive he cannot go home so it can reduce the covid 19 uh uh retransmissions okay so you so you make a three times test before yeah, people times. go back to yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. not two okay. times yeah times yeah because yeah in indonesia two two times i think but in in taiwan you're using uh, three times for yeah. the monitor of patient okay yeah and thank you very much and then uh we still have the uh, regarding to the big data especially about uh uh about the explanation about the big data as uh, dr lin previously already mentions about uh, how to handling uh, the big data uh, in the area of the COVID-19 because this is also something that we need to learn. So you already mentioned that you learned from the SARS uh, pandemic at the time and right now we, we also will be learned from this pandemic because this is pandemic is also suffered in Indonesia. And what the progress of Taiwan related to developing of the COVID-19 vaccine. Okay, let me try to answer the question 5-1. Uh, you know, in Taiwan, especially in February, we have several uh, events. Uh, once we cannot uh, find the source of the transmission, but uh, we do it like a perspectively. As I mentioned before, uh, we can uh, figure out and uh, uh, ask those infected confirmed case who is his or her uh, close contacts. Also, uh, not only in the office, but also probably in the school and also in the household situation. And uh, even we use those um, uh, uh, so-called health, national health insurance system to find out those uh, person uh, who try to visit the local medical uh, doctor and uh, they have been diagnosed like uh, the URI, you know, like uh, upper respiratory infection. In that case, those people will be asked to come back to the hospital or each uh, examination points in the community to make the diagnostic uh, examination. So this is depends on the health insurance, the recording uh, system, even it's in the cloud, I have to say like that. So we have a rather big argument regarding the privacy and the loss uh, contact tracing, you know. But yeah, uh, yeah. in the beginning, I think it's effective. And uh, most people in Taiwan, we can tolerate for that. But uh, I don't know in the future how we will be. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't have the real uh, uh, answer now, but I think uh, in the very beginning, we have to do things like this to contain as much as possible. Dr. Yeah. Dong, would you? Uh, I think the big data, how to use the uh, big data in handle COVID-19. I think I, just uh, as, as I mentioned, because we have NHRI, NHIA, National Health Insurance Admission, and the National Immigration Agency, and they inter create two admission stations data so they can understand uh, the past 14 days travel histories. So, and uh, we use this data and uh, we can definitely understand this patient have travel history and the travel history to any country. So this is big data use. And the second big data use is uh, because we find one person, he got COVID-19, but we don't know uh, who contacted this person. And then we use cell phone and uh, detect these patients, contact many persons. And uh, our government, government sent, sent a mail to the person, contact the patient's persons. 
and this and, and the other people who receive the message and they can understand he counted a dangerous person and they if they have any symptom signs such as upper airway symptom signs, they can go to hospital to tell the doctor the condition and the doctor will maybe will perform a nasal swab for this patient i think both of uh these cases is the big data usings yeah. and uh, about five question and question two i think because uh what is the progress in Taiwan related to developing COVID-19 vaccine? In Taiwan, we have a, a research uh, institute. Uh, we say uh, Seneca Academic. And uh, we also have another um, research center. We call it NHRI, National Health Research Institute. Both of this uh, academic uh, research institute they have to and want to develop the COVID vaccine. But until now, we don't have to see the positive result because it is difficult for Taiwan. Even we have a commercial company uh, for developing the COVID-19 vaccine. So I think it is uh, uh, in Taiwan, what's the progress in Taiwan? I think uh, it is not so, um, uh, so much progress. So, Maybe uh, we need uh, uh, Pfizer's or GSK's companies to develop the vaccines. And then yeah. such a question six, uh, I want to answer this question. In Taiwan, is there any government policy such as a last year social restriction or quarantine or stay home policy? I think maybe two months ago, because we have a, a, a guard. Uh, in Taiwanese, we have a god we call it Mazu, because Mazu is our Taiwan traditional god, because we have a ceremony for the Mazu hikings. And uh, initially, maybe uh, 60,000 people will join this activity. But at that time, the key person, he is very hesitant to continue the Mazu hiking or stop this activity at last and uh, because our president ties say uh, she say she will minimize the president inauguration as possible yes so after many condition the key person of this mazu hiking uh, the key person decided to cancel this Mazu hiking activities. So I think it is a spontaneous theory, uh, not uh, restrictions, just follow his mind. So I think I don't have any uh, good example to show uh, any large scale social restrictions or quarantines. Okay. Uh, let me just add some words. Uh, for the stay home policy, uh, no, eventually we only do this for those international travelers. And uh, in the very beginning, in February of uh, 2020, we also ask our uh, international students uh, if they come from uh, Macau come from Hong Kong or come from mainland China, they have to stay home for quarantine with two weeks. But uh, nowadays, no, it's eventually uh, as, the, as same, the, the same as those international travelers. So um, not so many people have to do those stay home policy nowadays in Taiwan, only for those uh, come uh, the, the traveler um, who came from other countries. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this question number six, how they appears, because as I mentioned to you by line that in uh, Surabaya, especially in, in Indonesia, we don't have any lockdown. So we just, uh, just have uh, like a, a large scale social restriction. But then we really want to know what is the indicator that uh, say that this is a policy is successful. For example, maybe uh, the case of the COVID uh, 
or was decreased or any other indicators that can show that the restriction is uh, successful. So this is why the questions uh, appears, why we are asking to, uh, to you. Okay. Do you have any uh, uh, comment about this? Especially what kind of the indicator that can show that this policy is uh, successful or not? So far, I think in Taiwan, we didn't have so-called the second or third round transmission. So I think ah, it's, uh, okay. yeah, I think it's uh, reasonable for us. But now that we try to reopen and uh, try to de-escalate the uh, rules or the regulations, for example, in the very beginning, I remember we, uh, our government said that we cannot have any conference or meeting if there are more than 50 uh, participants within, uh, in, in indoor. And okay. for the outdoor, the limitation will be up to like uh, 200 people, like, like, like that. Otherwise, it's uh, forbidden in the beginning. But nowadays, within indoor, it's up to 100 people. And the outdoor, it's almost uh, 500 people who are allowed it to join the, uh, the uh, activity. And uh, you can see, I, I remember this, like uh, our game, the professional game uh, for the baseball. Yeah. How they, yeah. they allow <laughs> almost 2,000 visitors. Uh, I, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, so I think it's, we, we do it step by step and uh, uh, no hurry, yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you very much for all of the keynote speakers. So we still have one question. Okay, from the Dr. Bayou. Dr. Bayou, Dr. Bayou is the doctor from our medical center. So uh, Dr. Bayou asking about uh, uh, what is need to be done for people with positive COVID-19, but there is no symptom show it so but show no symptoms so they be treated or any other comment for this one okay uh, dr bayou uh, how can you do if these patients not to be symptom but they are positive test in taiwan because we have many isolation rooms so in such as can such as condition this patient will be isolated and live in hospital and here three times sample show negative in this condition Ah, okay. Yes. Okay. And we will not okay. let them go home. Okay. So you currently everything is the hospital. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kuo and Dr. Lin and also uh, Professor Kuo. So because we already have a limited uh, time, I think this is uh, uh, the end of this uh, uh, seminar. Thank you very much. But before we are closing, so I hope that for all participants, Please turn on your uh, video. Semua participant bisa menghidupkan videonya because we would like to take a picture together. In Taiwan, we are using like this one, right? <laughs> so we will take a picture together. We have many participants. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Okay, can we turn on okay. Ibu Putri, uh, how are you well? Bu Ani, okay. everyone, yeah. Yeah. Bu, Mbak Alfi, uh, Pak Ahmad, maybe you can turn on the uh, video, Pak Weli, so please, yes. we can take a pictures together. Bantin. Thank you very much for the sharing, and uh, we still have so many, so wait. Okay. Thank you. Pak Agus Selamat, Bu Valencia from the Revito from Prindo. Bu Putri, you can uh, on. Okay. Okay. So okay. this is the first, the first uh, screen. First screen. Okay. We still have several screen because so many participants also. Okay. We can con continue to the second screen. Where Okay. Yeah. And then the third screen. Around 60 participants. Okay. 
Already, Bu Ervin? Already finished? Okay, the third screen. Yeah. Bu Start, okay. Umaya, Bu Maya, Bu Laura, and then any others? Please. Because we have so many uh, participants also today. Yes. Parseto. Parseto and any others? Virga. Ibu Nani. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay. We still we still have so many participants okay. in here. Thank you. So, or, so thank you very much, uh, Dr. Po, for all of the nice talk today. We learned so much, uh, so many regarding to what Taiwan already done. And also we can see the taxi and also can see many of the big data is a very, very important for us, especially in uh, this pandemic. And before this is end, maybe Budian would like to share something to you, uh, especially to all of the uh, keynote speakers today. Bu Fatma maybe already uh, left from this day because we uh, have the fasting day and we will uh, face the Ramadan very soon. Budian, could you share it? Oh, wait a minute. To, okay. to Dr. Ko and also to uh, any other uh, participant. Okay, Bu Orma. Okay. It's a very nice, very nice talk. And this is for you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ko and uh, Dr. Kuo. Thank you. So this is uh, some gift yes, from Indonesia, nice. but yeah, thank you. this is the fruit from Indonesia, but very, very far away. Ah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, fruit, uh, fruit, fruit. Uh, fruit. I don't know what, what the name of this, I forgot. The, the Mandarin language for orange is the fruit. It's a uh, uh, juice. It's a uh, uh, lucky. Yeah, juice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank also you. for Dr. Lee, thank you very much. Okay. Wow. So even, we are very, very far away, but we really hope that this is a webinar can give some, a few for us, especially in Indonesia regarding how to manage the COVID-19. And we hope that everything will be finished very soon. And we also can visit Taiwan and also visit you in Kaohsiung. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for the, all of participants uh, already mentioned in the chat room that we will have a, a certificate for all of you. Please, uh, you can go to the uh, evaluation and form certificate because we already put in uh, YouTube and also in the group chat about the certificates that you can uh, get from our uh, seminar today. So thank you again for your attending and I hope that this seminar can give some information and knowledge how Taiwan's already can very successful to minutes of the COVID-19. Thank you for everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Terima kasih semuanya, Bapak dan Ibu. Dr. Bayu. Dr. Bayu, terima kasih. Pak Agus, terima kasih. Pak Seto, semua. Pak Basuki. Terima kasih. Pak Budi, terima kasih. Ya, selamat